In today's pattern we're going to be doing the Christmas stocking and this is going to be done two ways in this particular tutorial and the two ways are determined by the actual material that you're going to choose. So if you're going to felt it, because I'm going to felt this after I'm done, I'm going to go with the Peyton's Classic Wool. This is 100% wool and I'm going to be using the red and white to be able to do so. If you want to just not worry about felting, you can use acrylic yarn, just like you see here in the actual example here. And you can choose like the Bernat Super Value Red, uh, Super Value White, and you can also get some Bernat Boa if you want to mix that into the top. For clarity reasons, I'm not going to show you what the boa is going to look like with this as I'm, as I'm doing it because I get a lot of consumer complaints that they can't see what the stitches are happening. So if you're using boa, you, all you have to just do is mix the two yarns together and pretend that they're one when you're doing it so that each stitch then will have both worked in. So that was how that would be how you would do the boa. So let's get started on this tutorial. For directions on this you can get this at my website at thecrochetcrowd.com as well as you can get it at allfreecrochet.com and this is the Christmas stockings available. So let's start off at the top of the stocking we're going to be using this yarn here. This is the classic wool so if you want to uh, felt it you can do that or you can just use the Bernat Super Value White. If you want a nice fuzzy top and you want to mix in your boa you'll do this at this time. We're going to be using a size I or a 5 point millimeter crochet hook just like so and let's start off with a slip knot. You're also going to need a, a stitch marker. You will see in the pattern that I advertise that there's no slip stitching and slip stitching causes a really god awful line so we're just going to work in a continuous spiral but we're going to need a stitch marker in order to count our spirals as we go. So let's start off with a slip stitch or slip knot and get started on this. To tutorial. start off with as you'll see on the directions is that we chain 56. So remember this does not count as one and we're just going to go to one to 56. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So regardless of your felting or you're doing acrylic yarn today, just follow the, exactly what you see on the screen and you'll end up with a perfect sock, a stocking by the end of this tutorial. So continue to chain number 56 and we'll meet back up and we'll, we'll join it together and we'll follow the directions as we go. And I have my directions right here so I can check it off as I go. Okay, moving on to step number two of the fuzzy top and the instructions. It says to join the top together and what we need to do before we join is that we have to make sure that this chain is not twisting up. So just make sure that you just follow it with your fingers and kind of just pull it and making sure that the top stays on the top so you don't want it twisting around and doing weird things on you. The reason for that is that we're going to be using those stitches to be able to guide the first part of the stocking and so if it's all twisted then the top will actually look pretty messed up. So just slip stitch it to the beginning just like so and we just want to pull it through and through, so through both. Okay, so now we have our perfect top just about to go. And so now it says to chain one, so it's chain one, and going in the same direction, okay, we, we are going to do a double crochet all the way back to the starting point. You don't need to put in the stitch marker yet. So just wrap and going into the first stitch, just like so and put down that straggler. We don't want that straggler being shown so just put it down on top of the line like that and it will trap it into position so that you will never see that. Okay so let's double crochet going all the way around so let's review double crochet so wrap and going into the stitch making sure your straggler is down on top pull it through and then through two and two. So go all the way around we'll meet back up and we'll start beginning the next process. So this is step number two. Okay, so now we're coming all the way around and before we actually start going over the next part we have to make sure that this is not all twisted up. So if you kind of pull it open like this you can see that there's a twist. So you have to make sure that it's going to stay flat. Okay, and how you can tell that is that you can tell this is where we're going to be uh, crocheting over next because it's beautiful and this is the bottom part. So we want to make sure that it's not twisted before we go over. So as promised, as we have, we have no slip stitching. So this time we're going to go right over the next layer. Okay, so we're just going to go in to just double crochet into the top of the next line going just like so. And I want to place my crochet marker now. Okay, it just gets easier to see it as you go along because we've hidden in the straggler there is that you won't see it. So I'm just going to ask you to double crochet again going over top. Okay, and we're now on step number three of completing the fuzzy top 
as we go. So just uh, double crochet again all the way around. We'll be back up and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we're just finishing up that revolution and we just went right over the top and now we've run back into the stitch marker. So let's take out the stitch marker again and we are just going to put in another stitch, a double crochet, and I want you to revolve around again another time. Now I'm noticing a difference between this one and the other one already because I used the boa yarn in the original sample is that this was actually a little bit thicker as far as height. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing instead of actually just going the five revolutions uh, like we've seen in the pattern I might actually go for six times. So I might just say level six on this particular fuzzy top go around additionally one more time to make it a little more thicker but you're the artist you can decide what you want to do. So just continue to go all the way around. This will be step number four of the fuzzy top on the directions. So now I've just gone all the way around again and I want to take out my stitch marker and this will be step number five in the fuzzy top of the pattern that you've seen. Okay, we're going to replace that back in. And what I'm going to just do is that I'm going to say there's going to be a level six on this one if you're felting for sure. If you're not using any boa yarn, um, I'd actually go one more revolution around. So I'm going to actually uh, implement that in here in the video because I think people will be emailing me to complain that this is not thick enough as far as the height. So this is revolution number five in the fuzzy top of the directions. Just continue to double crochet all the way around. We'll meet back up again in just a few seconds. So here we are again and I want you to go one more time and this will be row number six. Uh, the actual directions will have uh, row number six uh, added to it. I've realized that when I'm redoing the pattern right now that I've actually missed that on the original sample versus what I've written on the net. So do go uh, level six on the fuzzy top and this is the final time that you'll be circling around with the white yarn doing the fuzzy top. And again, even if you're using boa, that's not a problem. Uh, level number six is where you'll finish off. So let's uh, continue that and when we come back we're going to be bringing in the red yarn uh, and finishing off the white. So now let's finish off the top of the fuzzy and we have the stitch marker here. We have one, two, three, four stitches left. So let's go so that we only have two stitches left and we are just going to double crochet ourselves two more times because so that we get only two left and then according to my directions is that we will be slip stitch or single crocheting in the first one, so single, and then we are gonna take this one out and we are gonna slip stitch. Okay, so we're gonna slip it like this, but don't grab the white. We're actually gonna do the red, and I just want you to do a slip knot just like so. Put that on, and we want to use that red as the slip stitch pulling it through, like that. Okay, so now let's trim the white out, just like so, we're just going to trim it. So the white is now done for this particular project, so now it's up to the red, and according to my directions, so we're going to have two stragglers, which will be the red and the white, we just want to leave those down on top of the line, and we want to single crochet in the first stitch, okay, so the single crochet, so coming into the next one, single, and we're just using the two stragglers on top so that they get trapped in. You can clearly see where to put the stitch marker in now because the red is currently the change of the color. And it says now to double crochet ourselves all the way around and in the pattern this is row number one of the leg area of the pattern. So just double crochet and we'll come back to the slip stitch uh, marker, sorry, to the stitch marker and uh, we'll work our way again through the leg as we go down. Okay, we're now coming all the way back around and we're going to take out the stitch, mar stitch marker again and we just want to go and double crochet right over top of the last line like we did if it was white. Okay, and we want to put that back in. So now I want to double crochet, okay, and when you're looking at the directions, if you have them going, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So what I'm going to tell you to go five more revolutions. You don't need to see me stop every time. So do this, go around five more times. We'll meet back up where we hit level seven of the directions where we start making the stocking a little bit thinner because it's going to be tapering down as it works its way to the heel. So repeat five more times all the way around and we'll meet back up we'll meet back up on level number seven. Okay, so we're now going to start row number seven and you can see that I've gotten quite a bit done off camera. And so I want you to take out the stitch marker because we're now ready for that. And it says two together one. So wrap, go in, 
pull through and through two and hold then wrap go into the next one pull through pull through two and hold and now pull through all three and begin to double crochet so I'm just going to do that I'm just going to put my slit stitch marker back in and what we've done on row number seven is that we've actually decreased it so that one two stitches are now going to go into one and now it's going to begin to start the tapering so now looking at rows numbers uh, continuing along if you go look at row number eight nine ten eleven twelve I want you to do those rows uh, just as normal okay there's no two together one so just continue now to circle around so you're going to want to go this round so one two three four five six okay so re rotate six more times okay from this point and we'll meet back up and we'll catch you on row number 13 as we begin and we're going to do another decrease at that point okay so just I'll meet you back up on row number 13 I'm now on row number 13 and we're going to take out the stitch marker again and row 13 says two together decrease so let's do that again so wrap go through pull through pull through two and hold go wrap again next one pull through or go through pull through pull through two and hold and then pull through all three and we've just decreased again so now let me just put my stitch marker back into position so I know where I am and I want you to circle six more times and we'll meet back up on row number 19 and uh, row number 19 we're gonna do this uh, same uh, stitch again and what we're doing is we're actually decreasing the actual uh, we're making it tapered even though you really can't see it too much at this point but we're doing that and here this row here um, especially if you were head and boa it's actually gonna fold down just like so to be the top of the stocking just like that so let's uh, leave you to that. We'll meet you up on row number 19 and you'll be circling six more times from this point. We're now just completed row number 18 and we move to row number 19 where we're going to do two together, one decrease. So wrap into the next, pull through, pull through two and hold, in, or sorry, wrap in, pull through, pull through two and hold, pull through all three, and begin again. So now we are coming uh, very close to the heel on this bad boy so what we're going to be doing is I'm going to meet you back do three revolutions more and we'll meet back up on row number 22 where we're going to do a decrease again and then we're going to be getting off into the heel formation not uh, far after that. So let's uh, keep on we're going. We're coming to row number 22 and we're just about to start it. If at any point during this tutorial that you felt that this seam here on the back this is exactly where we started and we've been maintaining the slip stitch no sorry not the slip stitch but the stitch marker going down the seam if for example that when you're coming around and it's starting to appear more and more and more toward the front at any point just add a few extra more stitches just to push it more back toward the heel so don't be uh, scared about doing that so moving to row number 22 we are going to be doing I've already moved the stitch marker just so that you're aware of that uh, because I did have to make that adjustment and I've had to do that adjustment a couple times within this tutorial off camera and I figured I'd better mention it because people are going to be asking me about that. So let's uh, number 22 we're going to go two together decrease. So let's wrap and through, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap through, pull through, pull through two and hold. So now looking at our directions, we're going to go uh, two more times from this uh, point all the way around and then we're going to be getting uh, the heel formation which is probably the most intimidating part of any Christmas stocking for most crocheters. And we are going to take that step uh, slowly and every step of that will be filmed so that you're not left behind and uh, not completing this particular stocking. So let's uh, go around two more times from this point and we'll meet back up and, and we'll be finishing off a row number 23 and moving on to the heel. Uh, directions from that point on the information we'll get more detailed about that as well and all of that is available on my website at thecrochetcrowd.com as well as uh, posted as well to allfreecrochet.com. As we now move to the heel directions we want to do a couple of things and this is what you'll find online it's actually my schematic on what how the heel is actually working so we're going to be coming up to the end of the leg and just like so and then we're going to be working across and we're just going to go to a certain point we're going to then go up and then come all the way back across but we're going to come up slightly less and then we go up again on an angle and back and what we're doing is we're going back and forth up on an angle until we get to the top and then we're going to come down one of the sides and begin to rotate again. So I thought I'd get more detail to you and show you actually what the stitches are looking for. So what we're doing is that we're coming along here 
okay, just like so. And then we're just coming back up, and we're just getting more narrow as we come. And as we get to the top, we're then going to come down the one side with a double crochet, and then begin to circle again. So let's uh, begin again, and it is highly critical at this point. And let me just uh, zoom back out as we come out. And it is highly critical that where we end up, okay, will be the actual center of this stocking. So look for on this side where the uh, end is and making sure you fold it down. In actual fact, I think I need to go one more and exactly where that stitch marker is right now, it happens to be exactly where I need to start in order to do this heel. So I'm going to do that one more time. I'm just going to just go that extra stitch just to keep it even. Whoops, double crochet in just to keep it even because if you do not start at the right point on the back your heel will actually not be in alignment to the top okay so let's uh, stop at this point and I'm going to begin the heel formation and we're going to go working on this step by step so in the directions we're starting off at the center of the heel this is where we are and we're going to go over and we're going to do 12 double crochet across and then the final two we're actually going to do two together decrease so let's do that Okay, so picking it back up, and we are going to go 12. Okay, so let's do that. So let's count this out. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then the final two, we're going to do two together decrease. So it's just like we've been doing the back part of the leg. So just wrap and through, pull through, hold through two and hold, and then wrap, go through to the next one pull through, pull through two and hold, and then pull it together, and that is two together decrease. So let's move along to your next level going up, and we're just going to turn this, just like so. And it's saying to me that when I go to chain, I'm going to chain two, so one and two, and I want to do two together decrease, and then go to the center of the heel. Okay, so wrap through, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap through, pull through, pull through two, and hold. Okay, so you can, I don't know if you can really tell it, but you can actually see that this is going up on an angle, which is what you want. Let's go to the center of the heel, and the center has been labeled by the, or the stitch marker that has been left behind, so I don't really need to count that. Okay, so the center is your critical part of the stocking as you work your way across. But then once we get past this particular layer, we actually don't really need to keep track of that center anymore because we're just going to be maintaining the V formation by looking at the edges when we're going from this point forward. So, okay, so we're now at the center. Okay, so let's take that out. Okay, so we're not going to count the center. Right, so now let's count 12. So we're still continuing this direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'm going to adjust my material. That was seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then the final two, we're going to two together decrease. So wrap through, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap through to the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold, and that will conclude the first line of 
your actual project. So if you're looking at the directions at this point, we've come across, okay, and we've moved up one and we've gone all the way back and off the page. You can see that it's probably going on an angle. So now we're going to actually move up one level to level number three as we come back I'm across. I'm just going to shift the material as we work on number three coming back across. So we're going to chain up two, so one and two, and we're going to do two together decrease. Now be careful where it is because you've already done it down below. You can kind of see that these two are working into one. So your next one is here and here. So wrap through, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap through to the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold, okay, so you got all three and go. So now the whole th three, I don't have the stitch marker on the whole third level, I don't have the stitch marker in the center because now I'm paying attention to where the other side is gonna end. We hopefully have got the right of the center of the heel based on our first line when we were doing our counting at this point. And it's easier to get messed up if you leave that center point in there because you may realize that you may be off a stitch or two and then try to overcompensate and what happens when we overcompensate we screw up and that just seems to be my luck of my thing but you can actually see that the heel is now starting to form, form the formation like it does in the picture it's coming up on an angle so we just want to work our way back and so the heel is ending all the way over here and that's where we're going to end up so let's continue to do that I do not want to leave any viewers behind by just saying fast forward um, so I'm going to work on this process nice and slow. If you know what you're doing and you want to follow my directions, you're more than welcome to do so. Just I know the kind of email that I'm going to get if I decide to skip ahead. And we're coming up near to the end, so we have to look where the end is actually going to be. So the actual two, see how these two are kind of going into one? So in actual fact, the last one is right there. Okay, it's right there. And so what we want to do is two together one. So we have to pay attention where we're going to start that because we don't want to run out of stitches in order to do that. Okay, so there's two stitches left. Okay, one and two. And that's what we need to pay attention to. So wrap and through pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap through, pull through, pull through two and hold, and now wrap. And so you can kind of see that the angle is being maintained because I happen to catch it on the right area. So let's move up to level number four. And we're just going to go like this. And so basically every time you go and do a pass, there's going to be less and less uh, stitches to work with because you're eliminating stitches by doing the heel. So let's do one and two. This is level number four. Two together, one. So we're going to go this one and this one. Pull, go through, pull through two, pull through two and hold. Okay, through, pull through two and hold, pull through all three, and now let's work our way back. So when I design the heel, the heel is really important. I've been actually teaching how to loom knit heels um, for about six months now. I was doing a lot of trade shows and etc. And so the formation of this heel is based on my education of understanding how the heel actually works in a stock, in a sock. Most of the heels that you see when you're doing loom knitting will actually do, be a 90 degree angle. I did not want that for a stocking because you never see a 90 degree stocking. You do see it on the cheapy, cheapy pattern, patterns that you do find free online. But I just don't think it's realistic and it's not something that I'd be proud of to have up on my fireplace mantle. Okay, so we have to look for when the stitches are going to be ending for the final two. Okay, so we got, so there it is, one and two. So I got two more left before I do my decrease. Again, let's reevaluate. So there we got one and two. See, it looks like there may be three, but this these are working together. So you just have to be careful about that. Okay, so we're doing our two together decrease. I've already showed it enough times. I don't think I need to walk through that again. Okay, and so now let's move up to level number five. So we're going to turn our material. I'm just going to circle that so I know. So let's chain up two. So one and two. And we're going to do two together decrease. Okay, so it's that one and that one.
And we're going to do that, and that's keep going. Just work your way across. The heels are actually kind of fun. Um, I'm really intimidated by teaching it. It's why I, I made the this uh, crochet tutorial to be the last one of the 12 crochets of Christmas because I was intimidated by teaching the heel. I've done it on loom knitting and it's been nothing but a nightmare because it's harder to teach um, doing heels on loom knitting because of so much explaining about the process. So we're working our way across to level number five. So basically we're growing the back of the heel down. So it's uh, before I continue, so we got looking how many is left. You got one and two, so I got one more regular here, and then two together decrease. So the final two of this line. Okay, again, this line is nice and even, just like so. You can kind of see how it's working up. Let's go on to level number six. So we're getting less and less on here. Just gonna circle next to number six so I don't forget it. And one and two, and two together decrease. So these two are gonna be made together. Okay. Pull through, and now let's go into the remainder of this line. So do you see how it was important that that center really isn't important at all? It's just a matter about understanding making sure that you nailed the heel properly in the first go around. Okay, so now here we go. We have the final two stitches left. Okay, so you got one and two. So we're just going to do our two together decrease again. And again, a nice line is going. Okay, so that was number six. Let's move on to line number seven. I'm just going to circle that so I don't forget it. So one and two, two together decrease. So you're not going to be left much with at the end by the time you're done this thing. And like as far as the heel is concerned, so we're just going to go all the way across. But we're near done the heel at this point. Almost done. We've just got a couple more lines to go. Okay, we're looking for the end point. Okay, and I've you can see that there, so you got one and two, two together decrease. That was for line number seven. Let's turn our material again. So you can see that it's coming down more narrower. It's exactly what we're looking for. We just circle number eight as we come across number eight. So chain two. Okay. These two are going to come together, the two together decrease. Okay, and then we go all the way across. Now if you notice that the angle is different on either side, that means that one side is you're not grabbing it properly, you're not um, starting at the right point, or you've maybe uh, grabbed when you finished off your row that you didn't, you grabbed either too many or you didn't grab enough. But the, the way that it's growing up on the side should be equal to each other. So we've only got two left here. This is for row number eight. So this is two together decrease. Okay, so it's getting faster and faster. Okay, so it's so that was number. This is number nine, and this is the final. So one, two, we're gonna two together decrease. So these two are gonna come together. Okay, and then we come across, and then we just get the final two there. Looking for it, there's the final two already. It's worked out just perfectly, and I'm going to ask you to hold as I begin to two together, and I'm just going to ask you to hold so then I can actually just move along, restructure myself, and get on with the next process. So this is exactly how it's going to look. 
Okay, so this is the back of the heel, just like you see here. This is the front of the heel. And if we pull it apart, just like so, you can see that you actually had the triangle shape like you do in the picture. So let's move along and moving to our next step. You want to do it so that you're going to be going in the next direction so that you're going to be working coming up and then moving toward your left there if you're right-handed. So let's uh, move on to that process. So here's next. where we stopped and I told you that we're going to be building up and coming back around. I lied to you. We're actually going to just maintain this uh, idea. So we're just going to turn it back. We're just rereading my directions here. So this is where we finished off two together decrease. And now what we're going to just do is we're going to do um, a double crochet all the way around this particular section. Okay, so we're going to come all the way down and around and we're just going to continue. So you came in this direction and you're just going to continue to go in that direction but now we're going to go down the side of the heel. So I just need you to grab it in increments and you can just kind of see, just kind of eye it out and I just, I just came underneath just like so and now I'm just going to move down the side. So just put them in on an equal level, okay just equal distance to each other. You don't ever want to grab it uh, by a main uh, post. Okay, You want, because what's going to happen is when you do that, it's going to actually show a major separation in the heel. So for example, here's a major post there. If I put in a stitch there, it's going to pull it apart and you're going to very much see it. Okay, So I want to make sure I'm grabbing it in a, in a place where there's extra material in behind of it. So when you go to pull it, so you see that there's extra stuff there. Once you uh, get into the rhythm of this, you'll see that you can, the distance between each other is pretty much um, equal to each other. Like you, I'm having a hard time explaining that, but you just have to come in on an equal level. Um, you'll notice that you can just put it into the same spot pretty well all the way down. And I just shuddered <laughs> off camera at my description there because I'm like, oh my god, it's going to get a lot of nasty email over that but just uh, continually space them out as you go There's no exact science to it it's what you feel most comfortable with if you put in too many it's not really that big of a deal if you put in too less it's going to show it be very gappy so you just want to kind of eye it out just a regular distance of a of a normal crochet stitch At the point where we, this is where we're now uh, starting to join back up, and this is the, the front part of the heel. The stitches are already there, so we just want to grab it by the normal stitches. Okay, and just double crochet, and we're going to double crochet ourselves all the way around. Okay, so we're just matching every stitch to the other stitch. And the reason why we're doing that is that the heel, you can kind of see now that the heel was growing down, but you can kind of see that the turn of the, the front of the foot is now starting to form on your stocking. Okay, so we're double crocheting ourselves. Adjust the material. So what's happening here is that because we're going all the way around, we're forming the tube for the bottom part of the stocking to turn a direction by doing what we're doing. And uh, so if you have any questions about this, and this, by the way, is row number one. Sorry. This is uh, line number two on the bottom part of the foot directions. I think lesson number one was just actually just describing what you need to do. And I think this is where my tutorial starts falling apart because I'm starting to trip over my own tongue on describing it. Um, you know, doing socks is, everybody says they want to do it and it's not always easy easiest to describe to a novice. So now I've run out of stitches again on the top of the thing, so now I'm going to go working down the sides. And again, just incrementally put them in okay. and you can find that the distance is pretty well you know once you, you once you got your 
once you see where you can put it in, it's pretty much the same because it's the same stitches going all the way up the side. Okay, so when we get this done, what's going to happen is that we need to start actually um, bringing in the front of the heel to be a little bit smaller. Like a tube of a, of a sock just doesn't say the same size. It starts getting a little more narrower and a little more point here. And we're going to be doing that process next in level number three of this particular um, pattern idea. The, the key for this one here is that we want to make sure that there are stitches to work with. And uh, because of that, this is a really highly critical thing. We are going to want to maintain um, the back of the heel um, as far as the center point again when we get back up there. So we're just going to eye that out because we're going to have to start counting stitches. And when we come back up, coming to the top of the heel again, okay, we're just going to come back up over top. Okay, and just right through and I want you to stop where you think the center point is and it's actually pretty easy to tell okay so one two so you got two there two there okay we're pretty well at the center point and we're just gonna leave it at that and I want you to put in your stitch marker again and let me just take a quick break we'll be right back and we'll continue along and this is exactly what we've done so far so you can kind of see that the heel is starting to turn in uh, inward just like so. In row number three we're looking about skipping a stitch and where we're skipping is actually where it's starting to do this hockey you know like a hockey stick goes in a hockey hockey formation I guess you know it does that slight bend that's exactly where we're looking to skip a stitch because we want to maintain this section here and we want to do it on both sides so you option you can either count 16 stitches if it matches to that or you can just put a slip mark or a slip stitch in okay right on the one side and look for it on the other side and put another stitch marker in there as well on the other side and you know where they are without having to count okay so if you're following the directions it will say um, double crochet 16 times or if you just did what I just showed you to do you don't have to do that at all you can just actually maintain yourself okay and just skip a stitch when you get to that spot Okay, we want to make sure that we're nailing in all these stitches properly as we go around. Okay, once we get beyond that first revolution, when we've just done that turn, it becomes a lot easier to do. And so what we need to do now is that we need to skip that stitch where I've just showed you on the one side and on the other for several rows as we go up beyond in order to uh, kind of pull that to be a little better, a better of a taper, I guess you can say. So we're just double crocheting ourselves till we get to that point. So right where I put that stitch marker is the stitch that we're going to skip over. And we're just going to maintain double crochet, but we're just going to just jump over it to cause it to lose a stitch in this entire revolution. So basically within every revolution, we're actually going to lose two stitches on both sides, or one stitch on both sides. So there is there it is right there. So I'm just going to skip it and go to the next one over, double crochet. Okay, and it's going to become very obvious that you've just skipped it. Okay, so you don't really need to do much more than that. You just have to look for that in future revolutions because you just want to maintain that same spot. I'm just going to pull it out like this. Stitch markers are really quite handy to have. Sometimes I swear I can probably do it without it, but um, it gives me a little more confidence, uh, especially when you get moving the material around like I am doing right now, that you're not always confident that it doesn't look the same as what, when you had it when you had it lying down. And again, I am tripping over my own tongue, and I do apologize. I'm just double crocheting myself. The wonderful thing about when you start skipping stitches or doing two together decreases, you can be confident that the next time you come around there's less work to do. So in actual fact with every revolution now for the next little while, there's going to be less 
and less stitches to do therefore you'll get faster and faster at completing this particular project okay so now we have there's a stitch marker there so I got two more to go okay and we're just gonna skip over that one and go to the second one over and come back up um, the advantage with the stockings depending on the way that you're hanging is that you never really see both sides at the same time so even if one side is slightly off to the other um, it really is very adjustable and uh, it's very forgiving especially um, I know for myself that when I have a Christmas stocking um, I choose the best side that looks the best um, sometimes it depends on what side of the fireplace um, that it goes on but you know that's creator's choice to be able to do something like that as well so I'm now making my way back to the center point of the heel and you know where that is just based on the stitch marker that is currently in a position Okay, so the stitch marker is next. I'm going to take it out. And I'm only using the stitch marker at this point just to remember how many revolutions that I'm doing so I don't have to think about that too much. And so this is basically what it looks like. You can see that it's coming more in on the heel and it's becoming more narrower. And you can kind of see that it's, it's really grabbing its shape just perfectly. So let's move along to lesson, or step number four and uh, begin that process okay, again. So step number four, five, and six are going to be the same as what you're seeing here, is it? And we're just going to continue to double crochet ourselves all the way around. So I'm just going to show you to the very first part of the skip stitch, and then I'm going to tell you to do the remainder of this row plus a step five and six, so two more times around doing the exact same thing that you're seeing. So I'm just double crocheting myself to the skip stitch. You can see it as it comes up to you that uh, in the line before that it is done. So you can either move your stitch marker up if you wish to or you can just use your eyes and determine what it is. Okay. Okay, off camera my yarn is just caught. I've actually um, just almost used a whole ball of felting yarn uh, of the red of this so that means that there will be two felted red balls with this particular project okay so we're gonna skip a stitch okay so where do we skip a stitch okay we're not gonna skip this one but we're gonna skip this one you see how it's kind of bridging over the skip stitch underneath that's the one that we want to skip okay so we're gonna do that one skip that one and go to that one the next one over okay and we want to do that the same on the other side so continue this revolution and then repeat the same row two more times and we'll meet back up on row number seven of the bottom part of the of the foot formation just like so so here we are so we've done the skipping of the stitches and we're going on now row number seven Okay, and for row number seven, eight, and nine, so three more rows, we're just going to double crochet ourselves all the way around. We're no longer going to skip any stitches because we have to grow it out just out uh, without actually going any more narrower because you can't do that, right? Because if you go out more narrow, it's not going to turn out to a point of a stocking. So I'm going to leave that to you. So just circle around for seven, eight, and nine, three more revolutions, just like so, no skipping. And we'll meet back up on row number 10 where we start... Uh, decreasing more significantly than we have been. So let's do that next. Okay, we're now going to work on row number 10 and we've gone around three times a double crochet and you can see that I was skipping stitches and then I just did regular like three like I promised. So now we want to start decreasing it now to create the foot formation. So what I want you to do is I want you to visually divide this into four parts like you would see if it was a clock. So I want you at the first one quarter, so if this is half that we're looking at, so around the halfway point, I want you to put in a stitch marker. Okay, so it doesn't have to match this 
other one here. And then I, what I would do just to keep it safe is just fold it in half and get the other one on the other side. And that would be the three quarter mark on the other side, just like so. Okay, and again, it's easier to do this as you're working on it. And I want you to pick it up now, and we want to double crochet until we get to that particular point. Okay, so this is row number 10 that we're doing, and we're going to double crochet to that point. And we're now going to start really bringing in the, the top end, of the, or the I guess the tip end of your foot, or the stocking to be a little more narrower to the point where we're really now going to start decreasing uh, for the re remainder of this pro uh, particular project. So I can feel the stitch marker underneath my hands moving closer as I'm crocheting across. And what I want to do is that I want to do a two together decrease when it comes to that stitch marker. Okay, so the stitch marker is next. Okay, so I want to get that one and the next one to be a two together decrease. So wrap through and you obviously know what that is by now because you've done it enough times in this project. Okay, and we want to do it like that. So you can see it's like a V stitch at this point. And now I want to continue to double crochet around until we get to the third, um, to the three quarter mark, which is what I indicate in the directions. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, count stitches uh, when it comes to this stuff because if you're off by one stitch and I say go to stitch number such and such, if you're off, your entire project screwed up at this point and um, we are, you know, you, you've got an erect up project, you're not happy, so, you know, a lot of it is the creator's choice to be able to manipulate and cheat along the way. And uh, I see nothing wrong with that as long as it works for you and it looks good in the end, who cares, right? So let's continue to double crochet ourselves. Again, this is row number 10. We're going to be turning this project more and more um, as we get a, as we get smaller and smaller. It's just going to force us to turn the project more and more. That see that last stitch I just did? It doesn't look good. It looks like I've done something wrong. So if you ever see that in any of your projects and you see that and you know you screwed up, you know when from a distance you can actually see it. So it's better to correct it while you know that there's a problem. So this particular project, I will be felting it at the end, so you could have used red acrylic yarn or a yarn of your choice, but I will be actually throwing this in the wash and felting it afterward. So it's going to be fascinating to see how much this is going to shrink. Um, I indicated at the beginning of this video that it will shrink, but I don't know what that is because this is the actual one that is going to be felted. Um, I figured why do another acrylic when I actually want to try to do in a, a felted version for it. Okay, my stitch marker did fall out, so if that happens to you, I can just look at it. Okay, where's the other one? Just down, it's on the same spot. I just happened to see where it did fall out of, so. But if it didn't, you can just always cross compare. Okay, so two together, one, and we want to go to the back of the heel now to double crochet. And this is going to conclude number 10. And what we want to do now in row number 11 when we go around is that we want to make sure we're maintaining the two together decreasing at the same spot and that we go at. So we'll get to that point in a minute as we go around. I am running out of yarn and I'm running out of battery power on my camera as well. So we might have to wait until tomorrow in order to continue filming with us. This has been a six hour filming process um, today. And... Uh, you know, some of these tutorials, uh, though they're on there for, I, I estimate this will probably be a 30 to 45 minute video uh, when it all comes together online, but I don't really know until you get to that spot on the editing floor when you start seeing everything together, what goes, what doesn't, and uh, yeah. The editing is always the most critical point. Um, I screwed up the intro several times, so there's a lot of time that has to be taken off for that. So I'm at the back of the heel at this point, 
Okay, my stitch marker did fall out for that, or I did I took it out and I didn't put it in. I'm just gonna guesstimate where it's gonna go back in. Again, I can just lay it flat if I really want to figure it out. So going to row number eleven, we're just gonna double crochet ourselves. Okay, and I want to show you this step because I want you to repeat this for row number 12, 13, and 14 as well. Um, the same procedure that I'm about to show you next. So you're double crocheting to where you've done the two together decrease on the line below and you want to match it. Okay. So we're almost at that spot. Okay, so this is where it's, you see how the two are coming together? So we actually want to get this one and this one to be together. So it's right directly above it. Okay, so that one and that one. Okay, and we're going to two together decrease, so it's going to pull it in and it's going to pull it in more. Okay, and we want to go around to the front, the other front of the um, sock and around to the other side where we're going to do a two together decrease again on the other side. So hopefully this is a tutorial people will actually appreciate. It took me a while to write the pattern. It took a long time to film it. You know, it's hard to know if the tutorials are of interest sometimes, but you know, usually what I'm excited about, even if somebody does it, you know, it's not a bad idea to put it on film and let others enjoy it as well. So I'm looking where the other two decrease is, and it's right over here. Okay, so I got a lot of space to go. Hopefully, I got enough yarn off camera to get that far. So this a two together decrease is reducing the amount of stitches per revolution. Again, you will be getting faster and faster at completing the bottom part of the toe section of the stocking because there's going to be less and less stitches associated to it. Okay, so we're coming up to the two together decrease again. Okay. So that's the next one, it's the two together decrease and the next one. So we want to do both of those together. Okay, and then we want to go to the back of the heel again. So what we need you to do is that was level number <laughs> there we go, two together decrease. So that was row number 12, 13, and 14. So I need you to do that uh, two more times and uh, going around just doing the exact same thing I just showed you and we'll meet back up on row number 15 where we're going to increase the amount of stitches that we're going to decrease about um, to even make it more narrower and coming uh, very close to the end of this particular tutorial. Okay, we're moving on to row number 15 of our directions here on the bottom part and it says DC between uh, between the halfway point between the start and the finish of the two together decrease. <laughs> I'm actually laughing at myself because that's like so pathetic. So what I'm saying to you in this part here is that I want you between the start of the back of the heel where we've been going around, I want a two together decrease before this spot and this spot underneath. This is where we were two together decreasing. So we want to put one here and here and then what we want to do is we want to put one right in the middle okay which is in between of the other two and then on the other side we want to match it and then one again on the other side so let's uh, just follow it through with this uh, particular process so I'm going to pull this out and we're going to begin so now it's just roughly eyeing it out uh, at this point because where we do it now is going to affect what we do in the next uh, rotation because we're just going to start matching everything up and we're really just uh, pulling the heel um, together as we're, uh, sorry, not the heel, the front of the toe. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. <laughs> and if you're confused, join the club. So let's keep going here. So I'm looking for the halfway point between the two together decrease over here. I'm going to go a couple more. Okay. So now let's put a two together decrease in. Okay there, so we're going to put two together, 
just like we have been before. And then we want to double crochet ourselves. And we just want to eye up over top of where the other one is in the row that was several below. So the last time we did this, um, we were looking at row number 10 um, of this. So it's actually way down here. So we just kind of want to eye it up and just follow it up with your eyes. <laughs> and then when you think you got it, just copy it. So we're going to do two together decrease now. So you notice I'm not really giving any stitch counts because I really do want you to get used to manipulating and being able to alter a pattern to what suits you because you may have lost count uh, because chances are if you have the same stitch as I am it might actually be a miracle. Okay, so now we're going to get it so that we want to do another two together decrease at the front of the of the on the top of the sock here so I got one two I'm gonna go the third one over so I just folded it in half just to see where the front actually was so the next one is gonna get two together okay so now we're gonna come back and over here and we just want to kind of eye up where this is down here and just kind of follow it up so we're just going to continue to double crochet to that point. See the next revolutions what we're going to be doing is matching exactly what's underneath. So this one is really just establishing what we will be doing in the next round. So it's the only time you're really guessing with this particular idea. Okay, I'm just going to lay it flat, just eye it up. So I'm going to say that's two more to go. Okay, yeah, I'm satisfied with that answer. And I'm just going to do two together decrease. And then I want to get another one in two together decrease in the halfway point between this and the back of the heel not the heel, the bottom of the foot. So I'm looking, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to say I'm going to go over six. Hopefully I am not confusing you to the point where you're going to give up. That's three. Five. And six. And now I'm going to do a two together decrease for the next one. That's the nice thing about these socks is that you never see both sides at the same time. And now I'm just going to double crochet myself just to the back of where we started the rotation where the stitch marker is. So by doing what we've done is that we've significantly uh, reduced the amount of stitches per revolution. Therefore we're really starting to bring the toe together of the, stock, of the stocking um, more in line. And we are back to the start just like so take that out put that back in and let's put the stitch marker back in and we're going to start our next revolution row number 16 we're just going to follow exactly what we just did underneath and matching exactly what we did underneath okay so we're just going to continue to double crochet and we're going to look for the first two together decrease Okay, that was underneath, and you can see it's actually right there. So we want to make sure we match that, because we are going to do it again. Okay, so we're just going to double crochet ourselves till we get to that point. Okay, so here is one and two. Okay, so we're just going to go right over top. And so then we're going to then double crochet ourselves till we get to the next one. And I am running out of material. And this is not a big deal. So what I'm going to just do is if I'm running out of material, just like so, I'm going to add on the next one. And so this is what I would do if it was a regular and you weren't around. I would just put this loop on, pull it through, okay, 
And so the next one here is the two together decrease. Okay, so I'm just going to go in. I just want these stragglers down on top of the line. Okay, and we're just going to handle this normally, two together decrease. Okay, and then we're going to continue. We just want to keep le leaving these stragglers down on the top of the line so that they're trapped into position. And if you've done it right, then you should barely see it. So we're going to run into the next one very shortly at the front or top part of the, of the stocking. Okay, and it is next coming up. Okay, so there it is, one and two. Okay, so we're going to put two together, decrease again, and we're going to continue going. And I'm going to let the straggler just fall out now because it's in there long enough. You can safely trim that. So I'm now working my way to the other side of the sock, of the stocking, I should say. I'm sorry, I'm getting my terminology all messed up here. Okay, so we're just looking for the one that's underneath. Okay, there it is there. So one and two. Let's bring those together. And we still have one more two together decrease as well before we hit the back of the stock stocking again. Okay, and it is next coming up, one and two. So every time we're re revolving around this, it will get smaller. And now we just hit, and we're going to hit back at the stitch marker. Okay, so that completes that revolution. Okay. And there we have it. So let's uh, move on to the next uh, revolution, which will be number 17. With row number 17, we're going to do two together decrease all the way around this bad boy. Okay, you'll notice that a stocking is never pointy, um, and uh, because of that, if it is pointy, then people will probably complain that it, <laughs> you didn't do it right. So, what we're going to just do is two together decrease. So, we're just going to go into the first one and then the second, okay, and then pull them together. So, then we do it again. So, first and second and pull it together. So first and second and pull it together and do that all the way around. We'll meet back up and we'll continue along. So two together decrease all the way around. And finally we have our last round which is number 18 and this one here we're also going to repeat what we just did. Two together one two together decrease all the way around. So just starting off with the first one. I'm not even putting my stitch marker back in anymore because this is the last revolution and you'll be able to see it anyway. So just two together decrease all the way around and at the end of this ro revolution we are going to um, just sew in the top of the foot. So we did not want the top of the um, the top of their the toe area to be pointy so this is providing a nice rounded edge and then we're just going to sew everything shut and uh, be done with this tutorial. So we're now done and so now let's begin to sew in the top. So what I'm just going to just do is take that out okay, and just stick in my hook on the other one on the opposite side and just pull it through. So I'm using my crochet hook. So I'm just going to go into the next one, the next one and I'm just using my crochet hook to give a single crochet closure with the top and just like so. Okay, so there's that done. I'm going to just get my fancy dancy scissors. Okay, and I'm going to pull it tight and I'm going to just weave in the end. So usually what I do is when I do that I actually um, create a good and bad side. So you might want to check the other side before you've done that. Yeah, I should have told you that beforehand, but usually one side's usually nicer than the other. I will be felting this one here, so 
um, it really won't make too much of a difference for me. Okay, so I'm going to tie that off. You don't have you don't have to go too small. And now we are done. So let's turn this inside out or inside right. Okay, so here's my good side here. So where I change strings in between project in between, you'll see those hanging out because I pushed them on the inside. You can just safely cut those because you know that you put it in properly. And this is my completed stocking. So there's where I had more string. And the top end of my sock stocking is actually done properly. So interestingly enough, this was the original one that I did that I wrote the pattern, and this is the one that I did just now. So it's interesting, you can see that there's a huge size difference in the idea. The reason for it is that I used a smaller size hook when I did this one versus that one. And I haven't even gone through the felting stage at this point. So it's just amazing the size difference that it makes. Um, here in the top as well is that I used a boa yarn where this one I'm not going to because I'm going to go put it through the felting process. But either way, I'm actually really uh, satisfied. I did change the pattern during filming to be a little more um, narrowed at the bottom where this one was a little bit too pointy for my taste. Daniel was complaining about it as well. So um, yeah, these are my Christmas stockings. Enjoy. <laughs>